Over there in the UK, Black Lives Matter activists are trying to portray this criminal as a saint. BLM is trying to make a martyr out of this man named Chris Kaba. They are pushing the narrative that he is an unarmed innocent black man who was tragically unalived by racist white cops in London. The answer is clear. No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! No peace. What but the want? details of what happened when a police firearms officer shot and killed Chris Kaba aren't. The IOPC has launched an investigation. The family's questions don't end there. They are outraged. What an injustice. An unarmed innocent black man has been murdered by dangerous and prejudiced white cops because he is black. Just looking at the magnitude of the uproar that this issue have caused, the level of backlash the London Police Department is receiving for this incident, the riots and the protests that are being staged for this man, Chris Kaba, one would actually believe that this man was just an innocent bystander who was unalived by the police simply for his skin color. But anyway, let's take a look at what really happened here so that we can find out if this man is really a martyr or if BLM is trying to scam all of us again. Oh, police! Show me your hand! The story of Chris Cabba's shooting begins and ends on Kirkstall Gardens in South London. See how he drives forwards and backwards trying to escape. The firearms officer, Martin Blake, believed his and his colleagues' lives were in danger. A single shot is fired, and Mr. Cabot died from catastrophic brain injury. Mr. Blake was acquitted yesterday. The Metropolitan Firearms Officer Martin Blake has been cleared of murdering Chris Cabot. He was shot on September the 5th, two years ago. This all happened because of a, a police chase that night. The car he was driving had been linked to a shooting the previous night and moments after that he was uh, boxed in by police on a residential road in Streatham in South London and within the space of 15 seconds once he was surrounded by police cars he was then shot by Martin Blake but in the last few minutes Martin Blake has been cleared of murdering Chris Cabba. Chris Cabba died of a, a single gunshot head injury. He died in hospital the following day and this has been a, a very high profile case. Uh, Martin Blake had always uh, denied any wrongdoing while giving his evidence in court across two days earlier in the trial. He said that he had a genuine belief that one of his colleagues could have been killed on the night Chris Cabba was shot. The jury here were shown plenty of dash cam and body cam footage of the moment uh, just before he, he was killed. Uh, we saw various angles. It was a very uh, dramatic, fast moving situation. Um, officers hadn't expected Chris Cabba to move the vehicle once they had approached him to ask him to stop. But in that body cam footage, you could see Chris Cabba's car uh, erratically being driven backwards and forwards. And it was in the space of about 15 seconds from the moment Chris Cabba Cabba's car was surrounded to when the shot was fired that this all unfolded. Chris Cabba was taken to hospital the next day um, following the you know what following um, him being shot and it was in the early hours of the following day when he was declared dead. Now this incident happened in September of 2022. The Metropolitan Police officer who shot this man was charged with his death but just nine days ago he was acquitted and declared not guilty for the incident after thorough investigation mind you they went through the body cam footage from different angles they had professionals analyze the situation forensic experts pathologists witnesses including other police officers that were present during that incident all gave their testimony and after the investigation martin blake the police officer who took him out was declared not guilty now that is why this story have been resurrected again the police officer have been acquitted black lives matter and the likes of them are outraged and they are trying to demonize the police and push a narrative that chris kaba did nothing wrong to deserve his faith he was only taken out because he's a black man 
Kent, now, you are of the view that the decision made by a jury yesterday in a court of law in the case of the uh, case against a Metropolitan Police Firearms Officer, um, that uh, he had not murdered Chris Cabba, uh, the, uh, a black man involved in a stop, uh, by a hard stop by police, surrounded by police, shot in the head uh, by uh, one of the, uh, the officers, uh, Martin uh, Blake. Um, you, you, you have the view that that was the wrong decision by the jury. Why? No, um, quite. Let, let me firstly say, I thought the case that was brought to, on that police officers were wrong. Um, so the simple fact is, I just don't believe uh, that it was murder. I believe it was man manslaughter. I believe he was having a bad day in the office, but and 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 just felt pissed that um, that Chris wasn't following his orders. I also believe that it was um, the case, again, was to disappoint the black community because it, it, it didn't take into account that we want to see justice. We don't want to see, it's not vengeance, but we're looking for a just, a so just what, so, re, a so, result. So justice to you would have been that a police firearms officer who was dispatched to follow a, a, a car which had been linked to two, mer two, two shootings in the previous few days, um, following that, and when they tried to stop the uh, the car, and the and the guy didn't stop the car, didn't get out of the car, didn't didn't submit to arrest. They they just, well, you know, frankly, he was just a bit annoyed. He had a bad day. Maybe he had a row with the wife in the morning, and so he just showed up dead. But you're thinking that's manslaughter. He should have been done for manslaughter, not murder. I mean this it, really, it, really with great respect, Ken. Oh, are you kidding me? I'm, I'm just I'm just giving you my honest opinion, and I, I've been on a number of demonstrations. Uh, and we've been here before, but we saw the similar some similar situation with the Mark Duggan situation. Mark Duggan was also I, a wrong one, and the police were uh, also but, right yeah, to but, shoot him but, dead. But, Gillian, I, I was once a wrong one, but does it mean that I should be uh, uh, exterminated? Because well, no, what? because you, because on, no, because neither process? of these men were exterminated. They weren't walking on the yes, street, yes, and yes, someone yes, said, "He's a wrong one. They, they, I'll shoot him." They were killed. What a disgraceful old man making up ridiculous excuses to back up his crazy claim. And aside from him, there are countless other shameless Black Lives Matter activists who made up extremely nonsensical excuses for Chris Carver, saying the police should have caught him more slacks, okay? He refused to come out of the car because he was having a bad day. He was pissed off and frustrated. Maybe he missed a session with his therapist, making up ridiculous excuses just to make him into a martyr they were basically saying that as long as he is black then his death was surely because of his skin color but i want you guys to take a closer look at this clip the story of chris cabba's shooting begins and ends on kirkstall gardens in south london see how he drives forwards and backwards trying to escape the firearms officer, Martin Blake, believed his and his colleagues' lives were in danger. By the way, this incident was captured from many angles, but I chose the most appropriate one for my channel because I am tired of YouTube warnings. But I will leave a link to a more explicit version of this video. You can check it out later for more context. Anyway, now, this is a clear view of the situation. See how Chris Carver's vehicle was boxed in by the police vehicles. There was literally no room for escape. Yet, he kept ramming his car against the police cars back and forth. Why? Why didn't he get out of the car with his hands up in the air if he was innocent? Do you know how violent and dangerous you have to be to keep ramming your car up and down the police vehicles with armed police officers surrounding you from all angles? You have to be Osama Bin Laden dangerous to be able to pull this off. And for those of you saying, oh, but he didn't have any weapons in the car. Well, how were the police officers supposed to know that? This dangerous man driving this car that was involved in two shootings some days back does not have a firearm in his car. How are they supposed to know that? And also, news flash, that vehicle he was using to ram into the police cars is a very deadly weapon, okay? He knew that and in fact, he used it to that effect. The two airplanes that crashed into the Twin Towers on September 11th, killing everyone on the plane and killing more people in the building, were used as a weapon. And it was a very effective weapon, just like this Chris Carver's vehicle in this situation. So, dear Black Lives Matter, I hate to break it to you, but Chris Carver's untimely demise wasn't a form of violence on black lives. It is an act of justice. 
he brought it on himself and again i also know that so-called black lives matter do not really care about black lives no you only care about using black lives to push your narrative this establishment is only using unfortunate black lives to fatten their pockets blm is great friends with planned parenthood an organization that is inherently against black lives just in the united states alone planned parenthood on lives over 250 innocent black lives every day through abortions these black lives are defenseless totally innocent yet their lives are being taken away from them forcefully black lives matter supports planned parenthood yet they claim to be for black lives isn't that hypocritical if blm really cares about black lives they wouldn't be in support of roe v wade they wouldn't be in support of planned parenthood if black lives matter loved black lives they would be out here using incidents like that of chris kaba as a teachable moment educating black people on the need to stay away from crime and listen to reasonable order given by police officers but they would never do that they would rather spin the story around and prey on the emotions of ignorant black individuals amplify the situation and make money off of black people's predicament regardless of chris carver's criminal history just judging only based on this incident this clip this video right in front of me he is a criminal he posed a threat to the police and to innocent bystanders. He refused to comply with simple instruction, which is get out of the car with your hands in the air. He tried to attack the police officers with his car. So the police is totally justified for neutralizing him. In this case, it would be very wrong to demonize the police officers for doing their jobs because the more we crush the spirits of good officers, the less they can be able to fight crime. As always, these are my opinions, these are my thoughts, but feel free to share yours in the comment section below, but do so respectfully. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, honestly, I don't know what you're waiting for. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, like and share this video to keep people informed, and again, consider joining my membership as a way of supporting the channel. Anyway, thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you on the next one. For now, peace.